In the Bible, seven represents completeness. In some traditions, it represents the wholeness of the universe. Indeed, the Hebrew word for seven, Sheba, and the verbal root to complete, Sheva, come from the same root letters. This, along with the word for oath, Sheba, and Shabbat, which is often translated as rest, but actually means stop, allows for a lot of connotations added to seven, in addition to any mathematical significance or literary usage, which I'll discuss in a minute. There is the phonetic relation to seven when used in Hebrew. No one is really sure also whether the Hebrew sheish and sheba for six and seven are related through either borrowing or a common ancestor to the English equivalents or indeed any other Indo-European languages as well, though it could also just be a coincidence. Indeed, numbers are very cultural. For instance, the French devised the metric system, but decimal systems have been used in cultures from the Hindus to the Mayans. Still, consider that English, French, German, etc., all have special numbers up until 12. 11 isn't 10 to 1, for example, and that doesn't happen with other languages. That wouldn't happen, for example, in Mandarin. It's all base 10, but 12, in general, is a more natural number since it is far easier to divide than 10. Think about the Egyptians and the Greeks, who you had a base 12 system for time, dividing circles into 360 degrees. The Babylonians had a base 60 system in some ways, and even going back to the French, they have a base 20 system for counting past 60. Indeed, even many Germanic cultures use 12 as a system for counting, and in particular measuring, until relatively recently. Just consider why there would be a word dozen, but not a word deck, for instance, for a group of 10, if 10 is really so special. In truth, it isn't, but we have 10 fingers, so that makes a bit of sense. Though, we also have 12 bones on the fingers of the hand, thumbs aren't fingers, but you can use them to count. What is perhaps the least natural for math is 7. Now the closest to a consensus that there may be in this case comes from the fact that 7 is pretty useful for lunar cycles and solar cycles as well, but the Sabbath continued to follow on this 7 pattern cycle even after it no longer followed the lunar cycle because no leap days were added into the weeks, only the months. And so, while other calendars or other numerical patterns were used across various cultures, seven is one of the most obvious numbers in the Bible. The relation doesn't end with days. Among many other things, it shows up in seven days of creation, seven years of plenty and seven years of famine for the Pharaoh, seven times seven years until the Jubilee, seven visions of Zechariah. In the Christian tradition also, there are seven names of God and seven hills of the prophecy of Revelation. Not to mention, by particular luck, the Septuagint, although that is actually just luck. The number seven is used hundreds of times, though the exact number will vary depending on whom you ask and what you decide to count. That number alone is used 735 times, a multiple of seven, including uses in the New Testament. If you decide to include other terms like seventh or sevenfold, then that's another 125 times, including the New Testament. If we include names in Hebrew that relate to seven, like Sabbat, mentioned before, or also the area established by Avraham, Beersheba, which has an approximate meaning of seven wells or wells of seven, though there is some debate as to whether this refers to the number of wells or the number of lambs used to seal the oath. But again, oath has a phonetic relation to seven, so as you can see here, that number could go way, way up. There are also many literary uses of seven as well. It allows for symmetry of 313. Three. These literary structures allow for emphasis on the middle word in addition to the first and last. One way this has been interpreted, for instance, in the opening lines of Genesis, is that the first line has seven words. The middle word is et, which is a direct object marker that actually doesn't get translated into English, but it is made up of the first and last letters of the Hebrew abjad. It's not technically an alphabet. So, if seven represents completeness in a holistic sense, then the center of that, the center of how the Bible starts, is made up of a whole word which bookends the writing system, which is also representing wholeness but in a linear sense. It's a finite beginning within a whole complete structure. Following that, the next sentence is 14 words long, and then the following after that is a description that culminates in the seventh day, described in three lines of seven words, and then a fourth line finishing with the same root 
as the chapter starts with. Indeed, the first page primes the reader to look out for sevens. Now, of course, to go through the book thousands of pages long like this would be a bit tedious and is well beyond the scope of this channel, but it may give you an idea of how seven can be written into the Bible without actually writing the word seven, because there are so many literary uses as well, including still in this chapter with many, many instances of multiples of seven of uses of words such as animal. What's more, the linguistic ramifications extend well beyond this. It is the reason that there are seven notes in the musical scale, for example, and on top of that, Newsen designated the colors of the rainbow, Roy G. Biv, based off of that scale, which is why there are seven colors in the rainbow. Of course, these ramifications aren't limited to anything said here, but this video is not meant to cover sociology or theology. This video is slightly different to what we normally do, so if you liked it, please leave a comment, give us a like, or share this video to somebody who would find it interesting. Otherwise, you can subscribe for more, or visit the Patreon page to get even more content and help this brand expand. If you want, you can always check out the blog or the Facebook for new posts written every single day. Until next time, thank you for watching.